Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show. Hi, we're back. We are back live again. I specifically am back for the third day on Adobe Live. So thanks everyone for joining my previous streams. Yes, if you haven't and seen them, they were excellent, and you can go watch the replay. It was lettering goodness, awesomeness. All the so, letters. All the letters. But this tricks. is the last day I'm going to be here this week, so <laughs> I won't be here again. <laughs> I need a break. But it's great to see everyone joining. We have Sean. We have Cody moderating. Thanks for being with us again and helping us in the chat. Yes, thank you, Cody. Norsh, Francisco, Barbara, Andreas, Lamont, a lot of people that um, I saw the last couple of days and a lot of people that have joined our font streams before. So. Thank you. Let us know where you're from. Yes. I'm in San Francisco and Ben is in Brooklyn, New York. East Coast, West Coast. Yes. So. And our special guest today is in Portugal. So do we have, let us know if we have anyone in Portugal that's joined us today. That would be and super cool. And then we'll cool. reveal <laughs> who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know yet. It's a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh. hey carol carol says fonts oh so many fonts all the fonts so for those of you who are new to adobe fonts hopefully none of you are because you, you already know and love it but if you are new that's what we're also here for is to just uh introduce adobe fonts adobe fonts is basically nineteen thousand fonts that you have access to with creative cloud that you can use for pretty much whatever you want to make so if you uh, haven't dived into Adobe Fonts before, you'll definitely learn something today in this stream about that and um, kind of how to f navigate your way around and what to look for uh, on the Adobe Fonts website and when you're trying to pick a new font. So hopefully you'll learn something today about how to do that and just general things about fonts um, and all that good stuff. But if you never tried Adobe Fonts before, definitely dive in today um, and yeah, follow along if you want to. Yeah, you can follow along and with our guest and all of the fonts that she looks at. Um, just wanted to shout out Francisco's in Brazil. Um, and we have Carol in Florida. Carol says it's still blazing hot in Florida. Whoa, it's starting to cool down a little bit today here in Brooklyn, but it was definitely it's been warm this week and I think it's getting warm again. So yeah. It's a weird time of year. It is weird. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So we have this poll for everybody. Yeah. Ben, you want to take it away? Yeah. So I was just curious, you know, as, as I often, I'll just be, you know, walking around uh, in my apartment and I'll just think to myself, hmm, what would I do if I was designing a logo for the moon? So I thought we would present <laughs> that question to the audience. If you were going to design a logo for the moon, which direction would you lean in terms of font choice? Would you lean towards a futuristic space travel, sci-fi, you know, Blade Runner direction? Would you lean more towards, you know, maybe ancient, uh, ancient Greek or ancient Egyptian kind of letters or old, old looking letters? Or would you want to go with something more modern and present and kind of clean, you know, which would you go for, you know? And I guess it depends on who your audience for the moon would be. I guess everyone on earth is the audience for the moon, <laughs> but maybe for the logo, you'd have to kind of like pick a particular, a particular, you know, audience segment to focus on, um, you know, and it is the few, you know, we are living in the 21st century. So maybe you could have a different logo for different people. And like those people would see, you know, a diff I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, you know, uh, but yeah, yeah, let us well, know. Well, the moon is not on earth, so maybe 
it's not only earthlings that would be the audience for the logo whoa it's the entire universe because it's a celestial yeah. body <laughs> oh my goodness so we have a lot of answers already um it's pretty divided i guess Norsh says a mix of one and two and three. One <laughs> plus two plus three equals six. Cool. Um, Viola says I would do one and two. Lamont says three. A few people say three. Um, Carol says sci fi for sure. I Cody says two. The past, but not ancient, more like retro futurism. Ooh. And I think two might, well, in that way, two and one might overlap a little bit, which is like sci-fi and the past together. So one and two, you know? Um, yeah, if you go on the futuristic tag on Adobe Fonts, yeah. I feel like most of those are actually retro-futuristic. Agreed. So that could fit into what Cody's saying. Yeah, it's very, uh, I feel like, you know, what is that synth wavy? You know, it's that genre that's like 80s and... Yeah neon pink and deloreans and all that good stuff and like synthesizer music jamie says sci-fi isn't professional or serious so they would go with three. Oh, hey that that is sometimes true well it depends right i mean if you want people to be professional and serious about the moon then i think three is the way to go so i agree yes. there but if you want people to think the moon's super fun then maybe a futuristic tag could help you. Just again, audience. And now we're trying to appeal to aliens too. It's going to be very confusing. <laughs> um, thanks everyone for answering. <laughs> yes, and keep the answers coming. If you, you know, if you're waffling, you know, try to just pick one and stick with it. But if not, let us know. You know, it's a journey. It's this whole thing is a journey. So, so yeah. Um, okay. Well, this is the topic for today, and we're very excited to dive into this with y'all. Um, Type trends, friendly and expressive fonts. And we're going to dive into this. Ari, can you tell us a little bit about our guest today? And then we'll- Yes. Bring them we're really the excited to have Joanna Correa with us. She is one of our foundry partners, um, which means that we have worked with her to include the fonts that she's designed in the Adobe Fonts library through her foundry, Nova Type. And she's based in Portugal. If we have anyone from Portugal in the chat, please say hello. Definitely. Um, she has, I think it's three font families in our library. Um, and she is kind of an expert in friendly and expressive fonts. You'll see from the fonts that she designs. And she's here to talk to us about type trends, how to use these fonts, and where these kinds of fonts have been used in real projects. So welcome and let's show her yay hi. <laughs> hi hello hi guys welcome yay thank you so much for inviting yeah. happy to be here and sharing this uh this things with the with the audience yeah we're excited yeah, to have we're you happy to have you too yeah uh before we dive into the topic and we will get into it quickly just joanna if you could tell us a little bit about how you got into type design and and what your approach is or just, you know, anything about why you love type and, and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I started a long time ago in, uh, I think 2008, uh, when I was studying graphic design, I met a, well, I met a type designer, uh, in the class. He was my teacher. So I learned a lot from what was type design, but, uh, and I started like getting really, really attached to to this uh, to the subject because I love um, you know lettering and I loved calligraphy at the time. So I love letters ever since I remember. So at that at this time I had a really nice uh, there was a really nice presentation in my school by Alejandro Pol uh, from Sutipos, a type designer from Argentina, and he had. This ma amazing presentation with all these script fonts and beautiful, and I was like, "Oh my God, I want to do this!" <laughs> and I think that was the first step to starting uh, to learn more about it. And uh, well, and then I studied more and more. Um, I did the Reading Master of Type Design at the time in 2010, and then after that, I started to work freelance uh, since then. Cool. So, yeah. at Nova Type has like two years, almost three years now. Uh, but I worked uh, before with other people and other foundries 
you know, freelancing and doing all these works. And now it's great to have, um, yeah, all my fonts, uh, most of my fonts are in Adobe fonts, yes. which is great because lots of people get access to it. So I'm really happy to, to see this uh, happening. But it was a lot of work and people have to know that, that we work <laughs> hard to, to get the fonts to a good level of design and uh, research and really work them so they look nice and, and great for use, uh, for everybody to use. But yeah, so I've been um, yeah type designer since 2011, freelancing and and uh, working um, with my own company. Fantastic. Well, that's we have excellent. a few people that said hi. Um, Bliss says welcome. Abel says hello from Porto. Nice. That's someone you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a coworker. <laughs> Trivia says hola. Francisco says hi. Bliss says hi. We got a confetti toss as well. So yes, great. <laughs> Everyone's ready to jump in. Awesome. I think. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Excellent. So are you ready to uh, for us to dive in and, and? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Excellent. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so I'll, my idea to show you and talk about about friendly typefaces that I really always it was always my my focus on my designs even though i wasn't really doing it intentionally but it became kind of a trend these last years and everything is very uh juicy as they say here you know like very uh, soft and friendly uh i guess the trend of friendliness comes from this all technological environment and we need to keep the human eyes environment to make it more human more more approachable also more user friendly and one of the examples i brought was the the latest uh, um, rebranding for burger king which has like this really nice and juicy font and really interesting <laughs> design that i think it kind of uh you know shows how the trend is really going but there are really other there are other examples uh, from this and but we'll see that many of the fonts i will show are showing this trend quite uh, literally in especially using in in branding uh, the logo was also designed by newland which is also a partner in adobe fonts which i really love his work he did the logo but the font, I think it was designed here by Colophon Foundry, which is a great example of all this curviness. But as we'll see, uh, lots of this trend and fonts are also available for us to use. One, another another project I found on, on BNS that really captures this idea of friendliness is like a dentist uh, company. Nobody likes the dentist. So they do this <laughs> like trying to make it nice and approachable. And they really say here like, something that I always looked to do, like making the E that it's smiling. So this idea that the, the letters talk to you and they give you emotions by the way they look. And in this case, the E is kind of lean back and smiling and this kind of shape open and round corners is where you get that friendliness. And then you get a brand, which in this case is very interesting and you can read more about it uh, on the, about the project. But even the font that is used on the communication is super friendly with all the curves and all the, uh, the, the round uh, terminals. So I think this is really interesting to see uh, how the um, how people are approaching branding right now with it, with all this uh, flavor that makes it super soft. Another example with this logo type, which I, again, food is always in the theme right now as well. So there's a lot of brands that have this uh, friendliness touch in the fonts. Um, this is just some example, another example. And then the, the fonts are following this trend quite a lot. And we, we see that they, we need to show and to use them to see how they work in, in the brands. One of the newest fonts I found on, on Adobe fonts that I was quite excited about was this uh, decoy. Um, I think it's Mark Canezo. I mean, the font is really following this idea and kind of brings back the Cooper I, Cooper Black no font, but with the very much uh, renovated and more mm -hmm. up to 
up to the modern days and it, it can be used in the brands like we are seeing on, on those examples and you can get this one on, on the on the page and we'll take a look at that soon um, because when i was looking at some examples so the trends like this one always the rounded always the it even though it's rounded it's very well uh designed so it's not doesn't mean that it's um like it has really nice legibility it's perfect for the use like you can see the friendliness of these posters i mean it's really uh, definitely a trend uh, in many many brands on the websites even different languages so they're keeping the consistency of the of these designs um this is also a really nice looking brand again just a, a logo with a serif which is a bit different already from the other ones mm -hmm. but it keeps the open counters it keeps that flowy and and soft and another one which i will then follow up for some examples i i did just to show you how you can also create this with the fonts like this one is really interesting it's just a brand is using this uh, font for the website and for the for the the main communication mm -hmm. and for the app in the phone and so when if we want to create this kind of feeling with this you know interesting um fonts we can definitely use so i'll, I'll go here first um, so what i'm looking at is the the features that i would consider that when you're looking for a font you need to find like if they have open counters if they have like the soft uh corners or even the curves are really soft like curvy and like like really like the endings so this will kind of show you what can be considered more of a friendly font um, in terms of the E, as we saw, it's like the laughing E, you know, like leaning back or maybe this one in, in my typeface, Laka, that has kind of a small eye. So then it kind of looks like it's, you know, like winking a little bit <laughs> yeah. at you. And this one is the other one by New Spirit font, which I'll show more, that is also like leaning back and smiling like that logo was uh, in that uh, brand and the letter g is usually a friendly shape as well it's funny shape it can be more normalized but also more fun and open uh, and that creates that kind of feeling so i what i wanted to show is just to match the the one that we saw on the on the on the behance case that we can definitely use in this case this is decoy the font i showed you from marcanezo so you can definitely and you have many of the styles i mean can be bolder uh lighter there's also the italic which is pretty fun but this one really matches almost the <laughs> the same one which is new spirit by miles newland also has like lots of uh different styles it has the condensed style and you can get this like friendly feeling but still keeping the legibility corporate because when the font is really well designed like these fonts are you still get you can get the friendliness but still keeping the professional look and i think that's important for yeah. a brand um we no, have a few um comments and questions in the chat sure um, go ahead hannah is saying i wonder why the chubbier rounder friendlier fonts <laughs> suddenly skyrocketed in popularity and i think they have a point like you said fonts that kind of look like cooper black um have they're kind of retro too so yeah. was there something that you think created this trend well i think the retro was already here but definitely people needed a, a more of a, a connection with the with the technology that wasn't always so cold and I think the warmth is back. Like people need to connect with the with the technology in a more uh, personal way. We have all these trends for uh, even for the, the the products that everything is sustainable. Everything is more human. Everything is um, 
this idea of this these fonts look that like they were uh, designed by hand or brushed. So there's this connection, I think, with the hand that makes it also more approachable. But definitely this style is very much in trend. But I, I think this style is also very interesting. It's a bit more uh, retro, but it's definitely yeah. looks there's, clean. There's the still a friendliness, below. yeah. Yeah. It also has some elements of the typeface Windsor. Yeah, it reminds a little bit of the movies of Woody Allen. Yeah, so oh, yeah. like older. Um, so those in the chat, if you search Cooper Black and Windsor, both of those typefaces, you'll see a lot of similarities with some of the newer trendy ones. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and we had a question about type design. So Jamie says, I'm a senior graphic design major, and I've recently been enjoying working with word marks and letter forms. Do you have any advice for getting started in creating custom typefaces? Mm. So, for logos, mostly. I'm not sure why Jamie is saying custom. Um, it might just mean like Jamie has been working on logo types, but wants to branch out into typefaces. Like what advice would you have? Well, the best thing is to go online and find some uh, tutorials on the software we use. Uh, in this case, I use the Glyphs app, and um, you can start with a, even with a smaller version and then go up. But start sketching as much as you can by hand because it gives you a lot of practice. And those yeah. sketches, you can then just take them slowly to the, to the, to the software. And it's really, really the best advice I can say is don't worry about the quality at first just try and try and try because uh, if you do a lot of bad projects, then you will find a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any projects you started with that you just left because they were bad or <laughs> just did abandoned. you keep working on them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Some, some projects that you start and you sketch and you think they're going to be amazing and then they don't go through. And some other sketches that you just have some small sketch in the in in your notebook, and then you think, oh, this is nice, and then you transform it into a font just with a few sketches. But for that, we definitely we need to to be you know more used to using the the vectorial design and using the Bezier curves, which is probably the hardest part in type design yeah. to master. But once you have the sketches, the ideas you can definitely turn them into fonts. But uh, as many sketches as you have and you practice, then you will have more to choose from and maybe you will have to leave some of them behind and continue with others. But I, I always do that. So I always have like small sketches of the things. Not a lot, but the, not a lot of like, not super developed, but then I develop them on the software. And it happened to a few a few of the fonts, and I think I'll, I'll still show one of them that I did that way. Very cool. I, cool. I know for me, uh, it can feel like sometimes like you're wasting time when you're going down those sketches that don't end up in the final thing. But I've learned over time that that's just part of the process. You know, it's like you, those those rabbit holes you go down, those different things you explore. They may not directly end up in a typeface, but their practice, their, you're refining mm -hmm. your own ideas and figuring exactly. out what you really want to say. And it's all part of the thing. And so, yeah, I would just say, don't be discouraged if your first sketches don't look like how you want them to look in the end. Um, just, you know, keep practicing, keep sketching. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I see that we have a lot of people that have joined in the last few minutes. So just want to say hi to everyone who's newly joined. Um, we are looking at friendly and expressive fonts, mm -hmm. and we're here with Joanna, who is a type designer. Her foundry is called Nova Type, and you can find it on Adobe Fonts. We have Jeremy from Florida that joined. Hi, Jeremy. Atik Rahman is here. Danny is here. Um, Danny said, I feel like rounder shapes and chunky text makes it feel like it's not perfect because it's not a straight line. And realistically, we all have flaws. That was a cool <laughs> Good insight. Point. Too. Good point. Uh, so yeah, I think he's right about having like fonts that sometimes they might not look so perfect, but 
in in this case even if they're like more rounded or uh, they have a little bit of, of difference to them that makes it quite uh, approachable you know so it, it's it's different they're more approachable they're more clean but they can be clean as well so like i'm showing an example here of puffin display which is quite display quite rounded but when you see it it can be used in text and for corporate so you can have a, a kind of um, a soft spot between like a, what is expressive and what can, you know, have a bit more serious, but still be quite friendly and approachable. Yeah, it's like yeah. that that uh, special overlap of friendly and professional together, that little Venn diagram where they come over. Um, Tim Brown said that these fonts are making him hungry and they're, <laughs> they're, com they're comfort fonts. So yeah, those, definitely, yeah. definitely. They give a lot of uh, a, a lot of this uh, this idea. So this is where the the page where you can find the fonts and and, def and uh, you know and activate them. Um, this is also the the other one that I showed in use the new spirit one. Uh, well, here you can find well my my type foundry on, on Adobe and there's a few of them uh, that I will show a bit more, but. Like I remember designing Alga just from a few sketches that I had, just the A, and then it kind of went from there. Uh, so sometimes th that small sketch can definitely grow into a more a bigger design. But this is you. This one is also kind of friendly, but it's a more serious, um, you know, elegant, or at least it tries. But it's I always try to put some more of a playfulness to them. Yeah. The so, the, in the lowercase r, the ball terminal, and, and on the s, you know, the lowercase s, like that's a very friendly shape, at least to my yeah. eye. Yeah, I, I I think I designed like a, a, a separate version, like you can have a more serious s if you want. So there's like <laughs> the open type features to try and the italic is also a bit more uh, spiky and kind of serious. But yeah, that was one of, one of the fonts. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, you can definitely see they're more uh, friendly. So I can show you some examples of the Laka font, which probably is one of my most um, used fonts. And it's more of a sans serif. It doesn't have rounded corners or anything. But as I showed you before on the on the file, when we look at it, it, it can be quite friendly. Um, so it's for the people who like a bit more straightness, you still have the open corners, uh, the open counters, you still have like elegant shapes and you have like the more friendly uh, outstrokes. And, and in this case, you have a, a special um, stylistic set where the A and the E are rounded, uh, or you can have the other version with the, with the, the, straight, uh, the straight A. How do you access those alternate so you can, can you come that? here uh, on the open type features. We can just select the stylistic set is actually called a bright italic. So it changes the, the shapes Ooh. immediately. And yeah, and this font still has another other features like these things here that can work really nice for some brands. And these ones are the, called the discretionary ligatures here on open type as well. So when you type, um, I can just yeah, it just does it automatically. I don't have to do anything. So cool. I also so feel like you, oh, go ahead, Ari. Sorry, if you uncheck discretionary ligatures, then they will see. become all uppercase. So okay. if I if I do it here, um, just goes yeah, all uppercase. So yeah, you have to type uppercase because they're all uppercase. Uh, yeah. But it creates these clusters. There's many different ones. Mm, yeah. So it kind of extends the, the uppercase. Awesome. Uppercase. It's quite fun. And, and this typeface, as I was saying, is I mean, it's more straight. It's like more uh, not, it doesn't have the rounded corner. So it's not so much uh, like the other Cooper Black styles, but it's pretty friendly. Uh, and I was really happy to see it in use because they, this brand, which is famous in Germany for snacks, and they got the license for for it uh, for using Laka. In this case, it's the Cyrillic version. So cool. Which, 
which is really nice to offer the different languages so they can keep the same uh, friendliness. So the like the this letter is really nice and it has like the outstrokes. Again, you have a bit of a friendliness, but not so much as like the packaging. They have, you know, something more um, handwritten or different stuff. But for the website, they wanted the communication to be also, you know, friendly and approachable. So they created uh, the website with the font, which was really awesome. And they have the other version. And they made use of the ligatures, uh, like you can see here. Oh, cool. Very cool. And yeah, it that, really changes yeah. everything, those ligatures. They, they yeah. add some whimsy or some fun. They just they add a visual interest, <laughs> yeah. and, you know. Um, yeah, they yeah. make it different. So they 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 used it in a few in a few parts. Yeah, it was pretty cool to have uh, this kind of use for the font because you can see, okay, it's a food again connected to food, but it's definitely um, uh, not uh, so rounded or or things like that. Yeah, I mean, I use it on my website as well, so it's kind of more <laughs> serious there. But still, because but all my fonts are a bit uh, more on the open. Uh, friendliness. The uppercase R was, yeah. too. The uppercase R yeah. uh, on, yeah. on Laka too. That that curve. So even though it's not rounded, that curve yeah. or whatever that that extended it's part kicking. is kicking. It's kicking, and yeah. so that just has a fun or a friendliness to it because it does it. It looks um, unique, and it doesn't. I think when you see that straight geometric, you know, coming out of the R, it's like mm, this is very Futura. This is very you know, and this has bring some of that the k also does that uh, has yeah that i mean the k was quite yeah. uh people were like oh i'm not sure about that and i think i have a few letters that keep this kind of um mm -hmm. also the uppercase k which is also quite fun um yeah and yeah so i try to include this uh funky shapes on, on the font but if you prefer to use a more toned down version of it there is the like a text, which is a version without the outstrokes and it's more, much more clean, still keeps the open counters and very open. So it, it makes it friendly, uh, but it's not so much fun as Laka, <laughs> but it's, it's, it works together very well with it. You, you so might use uh, you might use Laka for the headlines, the big text, and then use for the smaller writing, you could use Laka text and they would pair well together. Exactly. They really pair well. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you could have then, like a whole magazine just with Laka and you wouldn't notice that it's only one family because there's so much variety. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely have the stylistic sets and lots of different weights. Yeah, I'm just showing a few of them, but you have like lots of extra weights to to work on and also the italic cuz yeah, the italic also keeps the the funkiness of the capitals and um yeah you can yeah. also have this in italic yeah <laughs> oh i want to see that yeah nice. <laughs> yeah it's just a tiny it's not super italic i never do very very slanted <laughs> typefaces but in continuing with this i i also love script fonts as i told you in the beginning was my kind of love uh but i have done a few of them long time ago and this was the last one i did for my own uh foundry and it's also available here on on adobe fonts and you can create lots of different things because there's many different styles to the shapes they're like terminal letters there are some ligatures and what you're uh, doing I, here is another way to access the open type yeah features, access right? the open type features because you can see how many f's there is in the font uh, so I can kind of flip back from them, uh, the K. You can also access this to the open type feature uh, tab, but this is also nice. And yeah, if I want to have, I don't know, even the E with an accent, I can Ooh. have cool. <laughs> This yeah, is also, I, I think, very useful if you're trying to start a logo or, you know, try to come up with ideas yeah, for logos. You can make it different. Yeah. You can make it you can customize it a little bit without having to actually draw those shapes and, and yeah like that. lemongrass also the l can go down so there's definitely a lot of nice things you can have like a terminal or a beginning of the r if i just want to write 
the, the different R, as you can see. So instead of being the R that is in the middle of the letter, it's a different one. And it does this automatically. Very so cool. there's a lot of intelligence behind Lemongrass. Uh, to make a, a logo, it can be really nice because you have lots of different uh, options for the letters. So it makes it unique and more handwriting, even though it's a very uh, be well-behaved script uh, font. <laughs> Not too unwieldy. I mean, it's, it's yeah, polite. It's, it's very polite. <laughs> it's working. There. It's like, you know, like it was written by hand with a pen, but uh, super slow. But it's, it's, it's a fun font as well. Francisco uh, asked, um, how much time does it take to make a font with so many features and ligatures? Well, for a script font, it really depends on your speed of work because then the, as when you start to get better and faster, I guess it would take like, I don't know, four, five, six months to do a script font or maybe more. I mean, I think I took more than that at the time. Yeah, so for, because you're not only doing that. Yeah, of right. course, you're not only doing yeah. one thing. Uh, but it's, uh, well, with the features, I don't think there's so much work because there's only a few letters more and some ligatures. It will add up a bit more, but not so much. Um, and then for expression, just because I would like to show, this is my kind of first expressive font that I did when I was doing a text font that you can also find here with um, Artigo book so the article uh, with the regular and and uh, for texts but there is a display version which was very much uh, it's kind of my brand thing that everybody knows about uh, well people already know me <laughs> and it's a really cool font because it's very expressive and I really love to do it because it was like a pen and this and it can work really well on, on, on in news. So uh, it's sometimes we're afraid of choosing uh, more expressive fonts, but it can really work. And this case was for a, a magazine, uh, so more editorial, everything was more serious uh, texts. So the texts are there really on the serious side, but the font is quite expressive and you have that uh, kind of a mix with the seriousness and the expressiveness. So I think this is also a good example of, again, of the hand, but as you can see, this one is not connected as the other one is. Mm -hmm. So it was easier to, um, to create in a sense, but it's also more uh, Diff difficult to create the, the shapes because they're more original, I guess. <clears throat> but yeah, this is um, uh, more or less what I have. I still have a few things here that I wanted to show. Yeah, and we have a. Uh, we had a. Oh, yeah, go ahead. From the Do chat. you have more questions uh, from the chat? Yes, a few. A few, couple comments, couple questions. Jamie said, um, I love when the typefaces allow the characters to interact with each other and make it feel much more personal. And so I think you showed several examples of that in um, mm -hmm. Laka and in Lemongrass. Um, and that seems to be another reason to explore open type features, Jamie, if, if you, you know, try out a new font, open up the open type features and see if, if the default version of the font might not show you that interaction, but the open type features probably do. And then uh, Swoop uh, asks. You, can also, oh, you yeah. can also go to the Glyphs uh, palette. Because if you open all the glyphs and you start seeing things like, oh, right, you can see all the letters, examples. You can definitely find out, oh my God, there, there is some features here uh, and then access them in the open type features and you can start seeing, okay, so there's a stylistic set here. There's some ligatures, but for example, I did a ligature for TH only. And so there's a few other stuff I, I didn't show yet for, for this one. There's like FF ligatures, FFI. So there's a few things you can definitely look in the glyphs palette if you want to know more of the fonts that you see. Fantastic. Cool. And then uh, Swoop asked, how do you decide what type of typeface you want to make next? Hmm, that's a good one. I like that question. It's uh, so when I designed my typefaces, I wasn't again, it was a few years back. They're not some of them are more recent, but it wasn't with the trend. What I mean is that I don't really think too much about what's going on with the trends, but 
what is more important for me it's always like how it's going to be used and for what and the kind of style that i like so I, if i like a bright italics i like this more friendly shapes that's what i tend to do um and that's what i try to do but always with the idea of how it's going to be used if it's going to be for a website for an app for uh, what kind of subject i can inspire myself in and to make it useful for people and to be expressive in a way that people think, okay, I don't want another sans, another, you know, the same font as the others. I want something more expressive and that's what I usually do. That's why my, my website says cultivating sunny fonts, you know, for warm <laughs> humans, because the idea is to do something more warm and, and friendly because that's my uh, personality and that's what I like. But always thinking of what are you gonna do it for in terms of use. And also in terms of like the people you wanna you want to interact because your audience is is very important uh, because if they feel connected to your work, then they will use the fonts. It's more than um, just making it super, uh, I don't know, detailed or super fancy. It's more about the needs uh, of your users. I would say. Cool. And then uh, Daria, Dario asked, how did you find the glyphs panel? Could you show that again and how you found that? Sure. And, and you go to the that. window mm -hmm. and you have type and tables, which you have all the type connected uh, things. So you have the glyphs, you have paragraph, you have a character, but you click on the glyphs. And then you, if you're clicking on the window where your font is, you can see all the, all the glyphs inside of the font. So, and their description, you can see the description to them. Uh, and if you click on them, if I click twice, I can have that letter on my screen. So if I don't know where I should type or I could find it, I can just click on it and I can see it there. Fantastic. And also when you select one of the letters, you're not using any other shortcuts to see the open type features, right? It's just, you're yeah, selecting you it click. and then it shows it to you. Exactly. So I think that's also what Dario was asking too. He had a follow-up. Okay. Um, yeah, you click on it and you can see the different kinds of very things. intuitive. Very and I think this glyphs panel also under the is also under the type menu at the top too. Right? If you here. click on type. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. So everything's under type, everything's under window. Also, yeah. if you select one of the letters, so there's multiple ways of accessing these. Dario says, genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you found something more. Yeah, we're yeah. always finding new ways of, of looking at stuff in, in design. It's always a, a discovery. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> cool. Are you guys looking at more of the, I, I wish I could see the- Dario asked if this works the same in Windows. Yeah, it works in InDesign, wherever you have it. Also works in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So it's just available. You know, you can find all these alternates and most foundries are designing their fonts with open type features, with alternates. So when you first see the font, sometimes it's just showing you just a subset of what's available and you need to open it in the app and just explore and see what else is possible. Exactly, and, and if you go into the images that uh, in this case I'm sharing, you, know, you can see the ligatures and you can see the stylistic sets. So if you see something in the pictures that you're not accessing, it means that it's somewhere inside of the font with the open type features. That's a good that's a good point. Yeah, if you see a specimen or something and you go, "Oh, that's cool. I want to use that." Probably if you're not seeing it, it's in the open type features. Yeah. Yeah, I can say that the client that did Lorenz, they they saw it on the Adobe fonts and they saw the the, the ligatures and they said, "Oh, I want to use that." And sometimes I would have clients ask me and they would see the images and they would send an email, "How can I use the ligatures because uh, that's what they wanted." Um, so definitely showing on the specimens what you have inside of the font is super helpful yeah. for the client. Definitely. Yeah, I would say, um, uh, oh, Charlene says, love Laka, which is 
Awesome. <laughs> Great. Um, yep. Some love. Um, are there any more in, in the InDesign file, were there any more uh, things to show in terms of what to look for with friendly or, or expressive well, fonts? I think mostly most important is to find some, like I did here, you know, find some inspiration mm -hmm. and take a look at what other people are doing and, and you and how they're using the fonts and with which purpose. Uh, and then try to get a tone of what can be uh, the best uh, font for it, or you can find similar fonts to what you see. But always be careful with the, if you go to, as we did here, you can use the tab for the friendly fonts, uh, but there's also like other, like I can go for rounded fonts, for example, if I want a more friendly font. So there's a few here that, can be really nice as well if you want really crazy you can go all the way you know you're doing a kid's book or yeah this is great for food again mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely this trend is really big right now but this is a, already a font with a few years old um that i really like uh as well so i think this kind of uh, way of looking and searching on on adult fonts also can help you have the friendly tab, you have the rounded, you can go even for like cursive fonts. Again, as I said, like what makes it friendly, it's the, the most uh, human aspect to it. So even if you go to a, a sans that it's more humanist, it can also be a friendly font. So if I go for clean, then it might be a bit too serious, but then inside of them, inside of this category, you can find some that are probably more friendly than others uh, that might have, I don't know, let's see, even Prosima is quite friendly, I would say. Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, that's... You have the open, you have the open openness. Go ahead, oh, Ben. I was, no, I was just going to ask if someone, you know, was browsing for something professional or clean or modern, what could they look for in that context? And you were kind of already getting into this, but what could they look for in that context yeah, to exactly. add friendliness? That's... Yeah, you have to look for the details, but like the, this A that has kind of a very round shape and also the thinner parts you can see there, mm -hmm. which gives it a bit of contrast, makes it more human because it kind of brings back the pen, the idea of the pen. And if you go to a more uh, technical, you know, grotesque sense, then it's going to be too serious like Helvetica. It's going to be too neutral for what you might want yeah. but if you want to keep the professional look and having uh more of this um, expressiveness there's many many uh fonts but i would say if in the friendly in the friendly tab you can find a few ones that are kind of more serious but still have this kind of informal look that like this one yeah <laughs> and you can have it's it, almost in the yeah, name <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it on purpose. I, I, I <laughs> but you can see like the ink, the, 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 the A kind of goes up. So it's more uh, reminding of the pen. So everything that reminds more of the, of the flow of the, the way we write, mm -hmm. it makes it more clean and, and also more human. So definitely more friendly. Um, so yeah, definitely you can find many, many examples here. Uh, I mean, some of them might be too friendly for what you need, but they're they're very uh, professional in in that sense. Like Parisian is a very famous font used in the metro in in Paris, so it was a font designed for a specific use, and it's for the city. But it has a lot of friendly aspects to it. You know, the tiny uh, outstrokes and the R, uh, the E that is laughing again is <laughs> like smiling at us. <laughs> So, and the, the shape of the A, the, the very open, no serif, nothing here, just open. And that makes it friendly. So I think right now, um, uh, the friendly, friendly fonts kind of are everywhere in all of the styles, not just the rounded or the, the, the Cooper Black, but in all of them. Uh, because we need the friendliness. We had these last two years were super hard on everyone. And mm -hmm. I think that also reflects in the way we want to see the world now a bit better and a bit more 
um, more soft and more and more uh, human, uh, and more, yeah. more human, yeah. more empathy yeah. be between <laughs> us. So I think the yeah. forms really help. And one of the stories I told um, Ari and Ben the other day, which I I wish I had uh, an image to show because I don't, but I've kind I found uh, lemongrass in a in a YouTube video about uh, uh, it was an hospital in the U.S. for. Uh, at the time, they were working on the vaccination and the COVID, and they said, "Let's do this together in a very big, big uh, outdoor with lemongrass." And I was very proud, and I was like, "Yes, we can do this together." And the fonts <laughs> really helped to make that communication more friendly and uh, upbeat, and at least try to get some more positive things out of all the situation. So that was a good uh, use of the font. So mm -hmm. I was very happy to see it in use for this purpose of approaching people to what nobody likes to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I feel like too that the you know as you're clicking through the examples and the and the specimens, if you're not sure how to use something or not sure how it will look, check out these specimens and see you know, a few contexts and, and even the examples you showed on fonts and use and on Behance, mm -hmm. it shows how you can, you know, I mean, out of context, like I think um, you showed uh, art to go display in the magazine mm -hmm. and it looked very formal, but I feel like you could also use art to go display in a way that looked very fun, depending on the context around it, you know? And so looking for yeah. examples, trying things out yourself, activating the fonts see what they look like in the context of however you're you're using things you know what would you say to someone who maybe is kind of comfortable with some more you know um, well-known typefaces and maybe some more you know they're 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 sturdy you know old you know classic typefaces but they want to add a little bit more fun or expressiveness into it but they're a little not sure what would you say to to them with that <laughs> Well, they need to test the fonts. I think testing and, and probably getting um, a contrast. So if you're using something more expressive, then you might have a very serious sense you know, for the text. For example, like having a contrast, so it's not super, super over the place. But I think testing the fonts, definitely like Artigo display, and then um, in my case, the Artigo text is also a very expressive font, but it's for text, so it's for small text, mm -hmm. not so much used anymore, like people are not printing so much anymore, but I think it works well for the web as well. Uh, but it's more expressive, so you can definitely get a little bit more expression for small text uh, if you like that. And then having probably different headlines. I think the contrast of not having too much expression and then having something that shows more mm. uh, will give it a good balance for your design. This reminds me of um, a similar thing with color and with fashion. You know, some people are very comfortable in grays and blacks. It's a very New York thing. <laughs> exactly. And maybe when you're getting a little excited, just have really, you know, a really bright, colorful earrings or really bright, colorful <laughs> nails or really bright, you know, add one little thing yeah, that's kind of the expressive exactly. part. And then it makes everything kind of even more exciting. I think that's exactly it. You know, you, you need to have just a, a tiny bit of it, uh, of this expression and, and the, the feel for it. And it depends on what you're doing, what kind of work you're doing. Um, because for brands, you can definitely go more on the expressive side. And then if you're doing more websites, then, then you need kind of to have the functionality. And you can see that happening here because they work with the with Laka, but then in the text, they use a more serious font for then it's more readable and it's more uh, kind of clean. Um, then it would be like the, the titles. But they pair they pair so, very well together, right? Yeah, they, exactly. Yeah. I exactly. So you you can you don't need to be afraid of using something more expressive for titles and then something more clean for the for the text. Yeah. yeah. Don't be and afraid. You mentioned testing. And the great thing about Adobe Fonts is if you see something on the Adobe Fonts website, you can easily activate it at no extra cost, take it into InDesign or whatever app you prefer, and then look at all those features, test it out with your text that you're using. So I think 
what you showed in InDesign could really make someone feel more comfortable um, using a font because they see like, oh, there's actually all these different weights or there's actually an alternate A that works better for me. So I think testing is a great piece of advice. Yeah, someone, uh, Hannah asked, what Adobe program do you recommend with someone new to the Adobe world who wants to try making a font? Ooh, <laughs> we don't have one of those, so they have to get... <laughs> Well, maybe well, you could start. You can in... use an extension. You can use Font Self in Illustrator if you want. Yeah. And you could use Fresco to practice sketching. You could certainly do that. Yes. And practice um, there. That would be a good way. And you could practice vectors in Illustrator. Would do you think practicing vector shapes in Illustrator could help prepare you for something like glyphs, or you know, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I think it. I think it does for uh, many people that start doing lettering and they start doing. Uh, okay. Uh, logo types they use uh, Illustrator, and if you learn the, the the right way of using the Bezier curves, which is probably the the most important thing, you can find tutorials online for Illustrator from lettering artists that will use it in a in very good way with horizontal Beziers, which is more technical, but you can kind of look that up. And then transferring the font from Illustrator to Glyphs, you can actually do it automatically, and Glyphs recognize. The, the outlines so then you can just uh, put them in the, the boxes because what happened in glyphs is that you have to design each letter in their own little square in their own information the name that you see here uh, and that needs to be created in a software okay. uh, like glyphs uh, that creates the that produces the font there are other softwares like font lab and and uh, a, a few more but font font forge that is also uh, open source but and you need to put them inside of their own boxes so then you can type them. But in Illustrator, you can design them for sure. You can start with Illustrator and then turn them on into fonts. We're going to have to have you uh, back for another live stream. We are almost done here, oh. coming down to the very seconds. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I wanted to show oh, thank you so much. Joanna's on Instagram and also her website. And also, of course, the Foundry page, which Cody posted in the chat. Please check out Joanna's typefaces. They're fantastic. And we will see you all next time. Joanna, this was a fantastic stream. A lot of excited people in the chat, very happy, and they learned a lot. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Ben and Ari. See you thank next time. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good to see everybody. Stay tuned for the challenge coming up with Sam.